the Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations. The Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations is the largest evangelical church in all of Europe. Located in Kyiv, Ukraine, the church in its nine years of existence has seen more than one million people accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There are more than 20,000 members who regularly attend the church services. The social work of the Embassy of God is accepted by the Ukrainian government. During the next 30 minutes, you have the opportunity to encounter the living God. We believe this program will help you to develop your relationship with Him. Jesus forgives every sin, sets people free from addictions, heals every sickness, brings harmony to your family and prosperity to your business. Only God can bring a real solution to the situation you are in and give the answer to your every question. He can help you to fulfill the calling and destiny that is waiting for you. You are welcome to visit the Embassy of God webpage at www.godembassy.org or write us at tv at godembassy.org. You're watching the Embassy of God program. You're watching the Embassy of God program. Well, they went to Galilee, which is from Jerusalem, is the very direct opposite, very north of the country. She managed to get there, but while she was still there registering with her husband, she, that she, her pregnancy was due. She needed to give birth. And guess what? They were supposed to be the child of God. And guess what? Who couldn't find a place in the inn? <laughs> who couldn't find a place in the hospital? Guess who they couldn't receive in the hospital? You could be thinking, my, where is God? Where is, I don't understand anything. Where is God in this situation? No, why, how could be, why, why should I be the only one that is unfortunate? Can you imagine all the other ordinary children? They got places. The ones who are not supposed to be any Messiah, the ones who are not supposed to be savior of anything, the ones that were not supposed to be conceived by the Holy Ghost, they, them, they are the ones getting places in them hospitals. And the only single one that was supposed to be special and unique is the one that got the bad luck. Disappointment. What do you call that? Disappointment. Even today, if you go to the hospital and they don't accept you, you break down. You're ready to protest. You're ready to write letters. You're ready to do anything you want. <laughs> because it's a disappointment. Now we're talking about Jesus. Why are you whining so much? If Jesus is not whining, who is supposed to be whining most and supposed to be complaining most, supposed to be these people, Mary, Joseph, Jesus, and saying, this doesn't make sense. Man, if you are supposed to be reserving, do you supposed to reserve God? You are supposed to reserve the best of places. I mean, you God, you send the angel to the shepherd. The shepherd don't have any bed. You're supposed to send that angel to the doctor, in the, <laughs> to, to, the, to the hospital, not to the shepherd. <laughs> but guess what? God, in his wisdom, somehow did not send that angel to the hospital to go prepare the bed that my son is about to arrive. Go get that thing ready. <laughs> He went and sent angels to some people who, was, who, who are not in the position to help deliver this child anyhow. So where is God's logic? We may ask, where is God's logic? Let somebody say, there is an appointment, there is an appointment. In, your in your disappointment. So why didn't God send the angel to the doctor? Or to the owner of the hospital to prepare the bed. Right. Or to give the best service. 
the best doctor or cure. Supposing if the baby dies or the mother dies in the process, so you need to have the best doctor. That's how I think it. And your thinking is, I'm going through my hard time now. God is supposed to have prayed, have fasted. Now God is supposed to do some major miracles. And here you come after all your prayer and fasting. Yeah, the worst happens. <laughs> the opposite happens. <laughs> I thought God was supposed to help me. <laughs> but you see, always remember this message. There is always an appointment in ever of your disappointment. And God sent the angel to the shepherds and say, go into the manger. Because God couldn't have sent them to the inn. Because then there will be, no, be no exclusiveness. That the God and the whole place is full of women and all the hospitals and all the you no know, no nurses and everything. There will be no exclusiveness of the. They will not even be able to see the star. But the star will have to be on the, on the outside somewhere where the shepherds could say, where they could be led to him. So it has to be in the manger where nobody will pay attention, where it's supposed to be, hey, there is an appointment. Can you raise up your hand right now and say, Father, Father I, believe I believe you. I believe you. I trust you. No matter what I'm going through. No matter what I'm going through. I, know I know you've got an appointment, oh, yeah. got an appointment for, me. for me. Even in my biggest disappointment, I right now open my heart to receive and embrace your divine appointment. Your divine appointment. Even in my worst situation. Lord. Come through for me. In Jesus name. Let the disappointment. Become an appointment. Let me see. The appointment. That you've got for me. Even in this disappointment. In Jesus name. And you know why? What happened later? The next disappointment. I spoke about it. That they needed to go far from Jerusalem. They needed to go to Galilee. Bethlehem in Galilee. Not just to fulfill the prophecy. But you know, when the, shepherd, when the wise men were coming to salute and to greet the king. The, I mean Jesus. They let the news out of their mouth to Herod. And you know, Herod wanted to kill the child. And guess what? If they had been in Jerusalem, if that had been the place where he was born, they don't need to struggle to find him and to kill him. But God made the man to issue a decree earlier on to send them to the farthest part of the country. So that when it was time, he, he had taken the decision to kill all the children and to kill the, the child, he couldn't find the child. You got what I'm saying? So God was creating an escape route, an escape route for them to be able to escape, to be able to keep the child. You're watching the Embassy of God program. Disappointment that I was heavy, pregnant. God didn't protect me. God, why should God allow this stress to come on me when I'm at the weakest point of my life? Well, your God's foolishness is wiser than the best wisdom of man. When I was growing up, uh, at, at, as a child in Nigeria, 
I used to, our family used to be prominent. And uh, we had some, you know, the senior members of the family. Uh, the firstborn was very well educated, uh, studied in England, I mean, in France, England, and was a lecturer in uh, a university in England. You know, uh, and uh, then came back to Nigeria, married a, an English lady, you know, became uh, a lecturer in Nigeria, became an advisor to the president of our country, and uh, was heading the Institute of Foreign Affairs, doing well. So I was living with my grandmother. The grandmother, she didn't, she didn't need to do anything because, you know, this son was taking care of us. And then the second son was also a graduate working in the Ministry of Economics and doing very well. And then the third child was a woman, and she was a businessman, one of the first millionaires in our country. Now, this was when I was growing up. Now, listen to this. You've, you've probably never heard anything like this, quite as horrible as this. Listen closely. From being one of the most respected and prosperous families, in six months, all these three people I'm talking about, all these three people, the one who is an advisor to the president, the lecturer, and all that, professor, he, the lady who is a millionaire, and the, the other my son, in six months, all of them died a mysterious death. One had an accident on a Christmas day, 25th of December. One, the other one has an accident from coming back from the burial of the other one. Then the other one just died unexplainably. So from going to be, to, I mean, from, from being up there as one of the most respected families in the country, I mean, when my mother heard that, she just lost her mind. She just went into a coma for one whole year. She never regained consciousness. No father. We didn't have a father at this point. So from having everything, then everybody began to say this is witchcraft in Africa, you see. This is voodoo. And so everybody started running away from our family. So I was in the, in the village, and I was with the grandmother, and she was in, you know, in the hospital, and we needed to go from being, having everything. Things were so bad, they were running. They said, this family is cursed. This is, I mean, it appeared in the national newspaper. Front page news. And everybody was saying, this family is cursed. And it could be, it's probably witchcraft because it's un unlogical. It's not. Even in the national newspaper, they say, what is this? Is this a tragedy or a curse? So everybody said, this family is cursed. And everybody who could have helped us, the family members ran away for their lives. Nobody wanted to be the next one. <laughs> so it got so bad, we had to go, I had to begin to go to the bush. To the you know, to bush, to the bush to get fruits to eat, to get firewood, to cut down trees, dry from six years old till I was 15. Actually, till I was 18. So from having everything to having nothing. My brother, the, the next person after the last one that died was 16 years old. Every one of us from 16 to 6 that we were sent out of school because you needed to pay for school. Nobody, we, we couldn't pay for school. We couldn't buy uniform to go to school. We couldn't buy pen, shock, blackboard. We couldn't buy anything. We couldn't, we have to go home, going to the bush, going to get trees, fruits, you know, to just survive. So my brother was 16, she couldn't even, he couldn't go to sit for his school certificate, for his school examination, final exam, no, no money to pay. So things went from bad to, from good to worse. And it's like everybody became bitter at God. Where is God? Where is God? And my friend, my brother used to be a kind of, you know, high, high guy. And he used to be up there. And when this happened and they chased him out of school, all his schoolmates, all his uh, guys, all his age mates started looking at him and saying, you used to be... Guy, 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 now you are nothing. The one guy in particular was singing to him, and he was saying, what does he get, what does he profit a man to gain the whole world? You had everything. 
and now you lost it all. What does it profit a man to have everything and lose it? Now you are nothing. So my, I, did, I didn't know I was small, but my brother came back from school and sitting down home, couldn't do anything, and telling that story that, you know, I don't know, this God is, how could God be so wicked? That how could he ever allow us to go through this? That, you know, we had everything, and these people are now singing. We are being sung like an adage, like a proverb. Uh, our family became like a proverb. We're being sung uh, at that, you know, what does it profit a man to have everything and then lose everything? So I heard my brother saying that like that, and we were wondering. I, I was attempting to commit suicide since I was six. I was trying to kill myself at six, 10, 12, because when I began to, life became so rough and difficult. I, the next time I wore a shoe was, I, rem, I could remember was only when I was 12 years old. I couldn't wear another shoe again. Even slippers, nothing, even sandals. The, so things were so bad. Now, look at that situation now. How will you, where will you say God is here? How could there be an appointment in this? Now, let me tell you what later happened. At this time, we were Christians, but nominal Christians. Not on fire for God, right? But when things really got bad, we got, we think there was no God, because God didn't protect us. So, but things got worse and worse. We were just trying to protect ourselves. So, we began to go to the voodoo people to look for protection. Because we thought, you no, know, my sister said, we only are, we are only three left or four left. We've got to protect ourselves. So going from places to places. And things were happening. But one day, in the process of her looking for protection like that, somebody preached to her. She got saved. She came back to the village and spoke to me about Jesus. I got saved. And at that time, I was about to finish my school certificate, uh, high school education, and there was no money to pay for the school. And we needed a miracle. So she used to have boyfriends and lovers. We call them sugar daddy. <laughs> just, <laughs> just to try to help me and to help herself to go to school. So, but here she came and said, I don't want, I don't have boyfriends. I, I stopped having all the boyfriends and the, I said, well, sugar daddies. I said, what? I said, I'm about to go finish my school set. I mean, this is, this is the last year in school. Please, just. F- <laughs> just one more time. <laughs> just let me finish school before you become <laughs> whoever you want to become. Let me finish school. <laughs> How could there be an appointment when I'm about to be kicked out of school again? <laughs> I can't see any appointment in all this. This is like appointment with evil. <laughs> but she said, now this is the time to try God. I've given my life to God and I will not have any boyfriend or girlfriend again. Boyfriend again or the sugar daddy again. And we're going to pray. <laughs> so she said, pray after me. That was when I first gave my life. I didn't know what I was doing, but I needed this miracle. <laughs> so I prayed. That was, you see how God, what God used? Because she was, I was desperate. So she said, we should pray. And she was not going to have any boyfriend. So I needed to, she said, only God. So we got to pray. So that was how I, began, I got introduced to Jesus. Then God did that miracle. And I was not schooling, I was not studying before, but because <laughs> now no, nothing was coming, I became serious for just six months before the exams and because I got saved. But I didn't know what I was doing. But that encounter with destiny led us to really discover Jesus in a new, fresh way. Because if those people are successful our family members who are really wealthy, if they had been there, we wouldn't have needed God big time. But this desperation led us to discover God in a fresh way. So I passed my exam 
be better than I could imagine, got a scholarship to Europe. Then I had an encounter with Jesus. Jesus came to me for three days consecutively, talking to me about what I'm doing right now. So you say, but if I had not gone to Russia, and that was in Russia, no church, no pastor, no believers. I needed to survive. That was when I began to cry out. And as a result of that, my crying out and seeking after God, Jesus appeared to me. You see, so that disappointment that there was no church, no pastors, no Christians around, gave birth to another appointment. Because I, began so, I became so desperate asking God, why did you bring me here to Russia? Do reveal to me. So Jesus came. And for three days, he revealed to me my whole life destiny. So everything that I had taught is a disappointment. When you keep on pressing to God, it becomes an appointment. Amen. Now, now, my name is Sunday Adelaja. All the people who died were Adelajas. But even though they were so prominent and educated and rich, but none of them had become so prominent like the Adelaja name right now. Now, we are not just prominent for business or education or in our country only, but now for God. Let your disappointment become your appointment. Are you listening to me? Let your disappointment let become your appointment. Let your disappointment, I beg you, my disappointment, our disappointment as a family has become a huge appointment with destiny and with God Almighty. Never you blame God. Never you sit down there, put down, you put your head, put your hands on your hands and begin and weep or cry regretting anything, celebrate Jesus. Do like Joseph did. Trust in God. Never you get disappointed you didn't get a place in the, in the inn or in the hospital, in the maternity home. Enjoy your manger. And your present manger will not negate your future glory. And the greatest disappointment of all in the story of Christmas is the death of the person who claimed to be the Messiah. How can a death ever be, a, be an appointment? That was supposed to be the end of the story. But even death, my friend, when you press into God, you will know it's an appointment. You're watching the Embassy of God program. Hello, everybody. Have you heard of what God is doing in the Ukraine? Wow, if not, this might be your opportunity to come. Well, from the 3rd to the 7th of April is the anniversary. Every year we have a conference that is called the anniversary of the Embassy of God Church. That weekend alone, we have up to like between 30 to 50,000 people who come to those four days to celebrate it. So we are asking you and challenging you and inviting you from wherever country to come and be with us in April 2008 from 3rd to 7th of April 2008. Come and enjoy the move of God in Kiev, Ukraine. Yeah, and I want to add that this year's anniversary is going to be a special one. We are going to show one of the responsibilities of the church to the members, to the parishes. We want to show you how, you know, normal people 
can rise up, can be filled with the Spirit of God, and they can go out to change their community. We want to show you how the church can really be a church without walls. So if you are not satisfied only with going to church, if you know there is something more than just going to church every Sunday or twice or thrice a week, if you really want to make an impact, if you don't want to waste your life as a Christian, if you want to maximize your life, you maximize your potential, if you want Jesus, you know, like a well of water, you know, to flow through you, then this anniversary is for you. You will see practical examples. You will see how normal people, you know, people who are sick, former drug addicts, people who had no, no, no goal, no aim in life, how they have come to God and God have just raised them up or, and their answers to the society. You will see how the church can be a church without walls. And apart from that, Kiev is a very beautiful city. You have to see it. It will be an experience. So make your travel plans, contact our office, and we'll be so blessed to have you in this anniversary. Well, welcome to Kiev. We're waiting for you. Thank you for being with us today. You have been watching a program from the Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations in Kyiv, Ukraine. If you want to become a part of God's growing movement in Ukraine, then we suggest you do the following. First, come and visit the main events of the Embassy of God, our yearly nationwide anniversary conference, our summer and winter pastors' fasts, which are visited by over 1,000 pastors and ministers from all around the world our pastors and leaders seminars that are held by Pastor Sunday twice a year, our annual men's conference, our monthly anointing service for all Embassy of God churches in Kiev on the first Sunday of each month, and also our annual March of Life on the main street of Kiev, which had about 50,000 believers in the year 2003. Second, we suggest that you come to Kyiv at any time and visit church services every Sunday and Thursday, topical night prayers, a different theme every night, general night prayers every Friday night, homeless shelter and clinic open every day, rehabilitation center for alcoholic and drug addicts where over 2,000 people have been freed from addictions during its existence open every day. Also, you can visit any of over 200 ministries of the Embassy. Third, you can come to the Embassy of God and participate in God's work in Kyiv, Ukraine as a missionary. Fourth, you can come to Kyiv and attend the nine-month Bible School program at Joshua Missionary Bible Institute, where you will learn from leading ministers of the Embassy of God. Fifth, if it is in your heart, you can become a financial partner of God's work here and through this, release the anointing and blessing of the Embassy of God upon your life. Sixth, you can purchase a wide variety of audio and video cassettes, CDs and books by Apostle Sunday Adelaja and other pastors of the Embassy of God. Seventh, you can get all this and other information at our website www.godembassy.org You've been watching the Embassy of God program from Kiev, Ukraine.